Budapest, 18th century. It was Christmas Eve. Everyone was on the way to the theater of puppets. There was this really big Christmas show, a really great spectacle. I was on my way too. It was a cold, dark night. Thick clouds were covering the sky and snow was lightly falling from it. So many people were waiting in line. The theater was dark inside. Gas lamps were lighting the stage. People were seated in their seats. Me in the first row. And the curtain rose. Then the puppets came on the stage. There was one, two, three. Three puppets were coming on the stage. The puppet master held their strings high above. The puppets were almost human-sized. Their skin looked like old, sick human skin. What a magical, mystery feeling was to see them dancing on the end of their silvery strings. The puppet master pulled one string. Up went the leg. Down went the head. He pulled one more, and then he let them all down. But the puppets were still standing. And suddenly... They started to move, all by themselves. I looked at the little drummer boy. I looked in his eyes. I could swear he looked at me. And suddenly he started to play on his drum, which scared me a little. And when I took a look at his hands, I saw a small cut on his arm. And it was bleeding. Everything here was not what it seemed, and I was uneasy. But soon the show ended and I left the hall in a hurry. As I was waiting in line to get out, I saw a girl standing in the crowd. And our eyes met. I stepped towards her and greeted her. We talked for a bit. Her name was Victoria and when we were outside we took a seat on the stairs at the entrance and we continued our talk. We both knew what we saw in the theater was had to be magic the night was full of it we talked all night long and as i was looking into her eyes her beautiful blue eyes i saw magic at them all the people were gone but we still sat there and i felt cold as if one of the ghosts from the theater was next to me and i heard a whisper in my ear kiss her now and i did kiss her and that kiss was a magic seal of our eternal love. Almost a year had passed, and Christmas will be here in two weeks. There was another show in the theater. I was occupied that night, so Victoria went to the theater alone. But when she didn't come home by midnight, I got worried and went to look for her. I went to the theater first. It was a dark and cold night, much like one year ago. Behind the theater I saw some stairs leading down into the cellar below, and as I was about to go down, someone opened the door. It was a big woman. I knew her. She was the puppet master's wife named Emergencia. I hid behind a bush and saw her carrying a big butcher's knife in her hand, and she was pulling a cart behind her. I decided to follow her. Through the streets, dark and old, I followed her for some time when I saw someone laying on the floor. It must have been a homeless man, and suddenly her hand with the knife rose, and oh no, it went deep into his chest. He barely made a sound before he died. She left the knife in his chest and all that blood had to stay in its nest, and wrapped him in the sack she brought and put him on the cart. I followed her again through the streets, and when we came to the theater, she pulled the body off the cart and carried it into the cellar below. I followed her down through the ancient hallways, hiding behind corners, when suddenly she was gone. I saw a light coming from the door ahead of me, and I decided to look in there. And as I opened the door and looked through them, I was terrified. Oh, such a horror show. But then I felt a blow on my head, and I fell to the ground and my vision went black. 
As I opened my eyes, I couldn't see anything. Darkness was all around me. I must have been laying on the stone floor, and I couldn't move at all. My arms were chained to the wall. I felt that no one was here but me. As my eyes got used to the dark, I saw many puppets sitting on the shelves and some jars besides them, which were filled with a liquid dark as hell. I was looking at the puppets when I saw, no, that's impossible, eyes on the puppet. Those blue eyes. I know those blue eyes. Blue eyes in the dark which saw nothing, and yet they were so alive. It were the eyes of my love. Someone say it's a dream. My eyes filled with tears. I could barely see a thing when I heard the door open. The puppet master and his wife entered. I couldn't speak as I was shocked. Emergency had put the lantern on a shelf, and the puppet master went to an altar with ancient books and human skulls on it lit a few black candles which lit up the room a bit. I saw a strange symbol on the wall. The master started chanting magical words from ancient tongues, and I felt some kind of magic inside me. I got afraid and, in a panic, kicked one of the shelves with the jars, and one of them fell down and broke. In the light, the liquid was red. It was blood. The puppet master turned to me and said, How dare you disturb my work? And in that moment, a demon's head, red as blood, appeared on the wall. I felt a sting in my eyes. They were given eternal life because of the disturbance and the ritual. The puppet master continued chanting, and I could feel my soul leaving my body and felt a tingle on my skin. The tingle grew in pain and I felt magic in me, and in the next moment, I lost consciousness. When I woke up, I was stapled to a hospital bed. Emergencia was cleaning something. The puppet master approached me and said, First your eyes, then your skin. We will make you feel born again. No more you, my friend. His wife turned around. I saw a shiny scalpel in her hand. I was terrified. She gave it to her husband and took a jar. And I knew it was a jar for my blood. The puppet master took the scalpel and cut at the top of my eyelids. He cut out both of my eyelids and threw them in the trash can. I was bleeding from my eyes like I was crying blood. He put down the scalpel and took up scissors, grabbed my eyeballs with his fingers and pulled it out. Now it was just connected to me with only a few strings and nerves. The scissors snapped, and he put my eyes into this puppet thing, like those puppets in the theater, just without that human-like skin. No oh God, why? My eyes could still see because of the ritual that went wrong. I was looking from the puppet to myself, but what I saw was no more me. He started skinning me, separating my skin from the bones. Emergencia made sure all the blood went into her jars. Pain, my senses went numb. I should be dead by now, but I was still alive inside of my eyes. And I saw Emergencia throw my carcass into the trash. As they dressed the puppet, me, in my skin, they put it on a shelf next to Victoria. I couldn't move, only look around, but I couldn't see her eyes or body move at all. I was sitting in darkness, thinking about what happened to me. I knew that things would never be the same again. I might only be able to move because of the disturbance and the ritual, but what about Victoria and the other puppets? Are they ever going to see? Will we have to dance for the puppet master? After much time, the puppet master and his wife returned. They took me and Victoria off the shelf and put us in front of each other. Merhensia took two little jars from the shelves and took an injection and filled it with blood. 
she came to me and stuck it in my skin and emptied all of it into me. At first, I didn't feel a thing. But after a few seconds, I felt some kind of tingle on my skin. She did the same with Victoria. My limbs suddenly started trembling and moving. So did Victoria's. There was no mistake now. That was my love. She was scared and surprised. She looked in my eyes and, believe it or not, our love was so strong that we could talk by only looking at each other. They're alive, we heard Mercencia say. That's enough for today. Put them away. A few minutes later, we were sitting on our shelves, sitting opposite to each other, talking with our eyes, trying to remember everything we did together and what has happened to us. Sadness filled my heart. I knew that, that one year was the best of my life, but nothing will ever be the same. We had trained for 13 days. The puppet master brought us back to life and made us dance on the strings. Every time, after the training was done, he put us back on the shelf. We had about half an hour every time to talk with our eyes, but then she had fainted again and couldn't move at all. On the 13th day, as they brought us to life, the puppet master said to Victoria, Tonight you will dance for me, puppet girl. No strings attached. Victoria looked at me. Oh no, I can't. Never ever did I dance. I don't have a chance. Dance. She made a step. Oh, she tried her best, but stumbled to the shelf with the jars of blood. Six of them fell down. Broken glass with puppet life was on the floor. The puppet master was furious and said to Emergencia, Send her far away, far away from here, to the other theater. Tomorrow morning she must be gone. Send her to Berlin. Send that puppet to Berlin. And stormed out of the room. Emergencia put us back on the shelves and went to prepare the box to send Victoria to Berlin with and we were sitting in the dark. I knew if they took her away, there is no life for me. Take her away, and I die. Victoria said, Tell me, this is not goodbye. I asked her, Do you remember the butterfly? It made me cry. I know, but we dried its wings so that we could fly again. I wonder, this is the end for you and I? I know we've got to say goodbye. I know I would change my life for you. I would die for you. I will always remember the things we used to do, all the memories I keep in here, just for me and you. With your image in my eyes, I take you with me when it's time to go. I swear, I swear I'll find you. I'll keep searching, searching to the end of time. But what if I can't survive without you by my side? Then wait for me. Wait for me. Wait on the other side. I'll be there. I can't barely see you anymore. You must remember the butterfly. It did not die. I love you. I love you too. I can't see you anymore. Goodbye, my love. And in that moment, I knew it was all over for us. And so came the day of the big Christmas show. I made a plan last night how I will get my revenge. I'll mess up the show, and then they will send me away, hopefully to Berlin. They injected my blood into me and two other puppets, and so we went to the cellar to the back entrance of the theater. Snow was falling from the sky, and all I wanted to do was cry. And so here I was again, the place where it all started in the theater. But this time, I was on the stage. All the seats were taken, and we started. First, the puppet master was controlling us with the strings. This year, I was the little drummer boy. As I looked to the crowd, I saw a boy who reminded me of myself. And so it came the part when the puppet master let down the strings. The crowd was amazed when we started to dance all by ourselves, and I was playing the drum. It made myself fall 
on my face. The drum shattered in millions of pieces which fell all over the stage. I just messed up the biggest show of the year. That was a small revenge. And now I'm hanging in this old toy store in the back street in the poor part of town. Hanging on the wall, a nail sticking through my throat. I've been hanging here for... What was it? Eighteen years. The puppet master and his wife sold me to the shop for little more than a few shillings. All these years I've been hanging on the wall. All I could do was move my eyes, look around, and listen to people talking. The children who came to the store were scared of me. He looked sick. He's scary. His eyes just moved. I will never get bought. In all these years, I've never seen my love. One day, I heard the shopkeeper talking with a customer about the puppet master and emergencia. They were opening a new theater in London for children, run by their son and daughter. Think of it. For children. It's gonna be a bloody mess.